I'm Ali Sahili, uh, CEO and co-founder of Photo Technologies. I was born in Iran um, and uh, I did my uh, middle school and primary school and high school in Iran and I graduated when I was like 16 and then uh, my, my mom actually said it's better if you go to the UK and uh, go to university over there. So once I graduated, I moved here and I kind of enrolled in the university in the UK. When I arrived in the UK, I was, I said, uh, 16, and uh, I couldn't actually go to university. Um, so I realized I have to do a foundation year and then to, to be able to, to do an undergrad. And I realized Southampton is the best place for me to do undergrad, So because I wanted to do computer engineering. I enrolled in a foundation, I came in, and then after that I did an undergrad, and then continued to MH. So I stayed in Southampton University for five years, from foundation to getting my MH. Um, so I came 16 and graduated when I was 21, basically, and all in Southampton. So my third year project was um, putting ski sensors, uh, sorry, putting wireless sensors on the skiers and tracking them down the mountain. I uh, spent six months doing this, design it and uh, program it. And it worked. I mean, it's very surprising that it actually worked. It's, it's like putting different puzzles together and it's you know, like, oh man, it's, everything's working together. I was very excited. I uh, showed it to my supervisor, Dr. Reeve, and uh, he really liked it. And he actually took it serious and was like, hey, let's go meet my partner, um, another university academic, and pitch the idea as like a business. And um, I remember viv vividly that day and I went and I pitched it and uh, they saw it, the two sensors were working, communicating messages and dumping the data. So as it's gears, um, they gave me like a judges, you know, like they sit down on the other side of the table and they gave me feedback. Um, they politely reject my idea because they, they didn't see it as a, like a, an idea that turned money. They, they say if you applied in different industry, like you're putting a sensor on a fireman and track them in a mountain, in a, in a, in a, in a building, it's way better for business. But I learned a lot. I mean, it's like being in university and turning my third year uh, academic project to uh, potentially a real business. And one of the, that was actually the first time I had a chance of thinking that way. On my fourth year, I was in process of like finding a job, like I was looking around and uh, I found every job's boring. You know, everything I went to was cubicle, very boring. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. It was very confused. And I remember somehow I came across this post um, by this uh, society called Fish and Toast. And I didn't know what it was. And I ended up saying, let's go to it. And it sounds like an entrepreneurship. I didn't know what was entrepreneurship was, but it sounded cool. I like the word. So I went to it and there was this guy and he talked about he built his company from an idea to a real company and building a product that didn't exist before and real people using it. And the, the event was a workshop. So we, we go with the idea and uh, we had our own idea that day. We just came up with the idea and we turned it to um, a product. I mean, imagine a product and we had to write a business plan. They taught us how to do it and we had to present it to them. There was like two of them, they were judges. And it was a whole event, whole day. And I remember I walked out at that event and I was like, I wanna do that. I mean. I don't know what it is, but I want to do this. It's just changed my mindset. So because before I was like, job is a boring thing. You just get it to get money and looking forward for a weekend. But I was like, if I could do this every day, this is just amazing. I can just build something. So, I mean, I can say that after that, I, I was like, I want to become an entrepreneur. But whatever it means is just, I wanted to build something from scratch and do it. And that event pretty much changed my life after that. So I graduated in August 2010, and uh, at that time I had a couple offers, um, but I didn't take any of them because I wasn't passionate about any of those jobs. So I decided to move to Canada because um, my parents had an immigration. So through them I moved to Canada, and for the first six months I was gonna, con I did continue what I thought was in, like a entrepreneurship. So so I keep building products like a web application. So I had so many ideas like website for sharing music or posting images, like so many things. But my idea was like, keep doing things and see which one sticks. And uh, for six months, pretty much, I don't know how many projects I did, 20, 30 things I did. Um, and I failed in all of them. I mean, none of them stick around and, and my friends use it for a few days and stop using it, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot on turning my idea to real product. And that was a phase after my graduation. So after I moved there for six months, 
six months, I was day and night um, basically investing in myself, learning a new language, uh, web applications, basically languages like you know Python, databases, and all this stuff, became better at it and building applications. Um, that was the phase. After six months, um, I realized that, okay, none of these are working. I'm kind of broke. So I didn't have money. I was like, it's, um, it's good to get a job. I mean, they, we need to pay the bills. Um, it's coincidence that I came across a company called Recon Instruments that they had a heads up display that, that you could see where you're going down a mountain. And my thesis, thesis, as I said, for a 30 project was uh, tracking skiers down a mountain. Um, so, I mean, it's a funny story, but I sent an email to this, one of the supervisors there and I said, hey, um, this is, I like the goggle, I like the technology. And he's like, hey, do you have a resume? Um, this is a funny because I brought it up another day and I sent a resume. He said, hey, do you want a job next week? And I was like, great. And I ended up working there and I worked in recon and uh, worked there for a year and a half, um, helped building their social networking platform called Engage which um, skiers can share their runs and they can communicate with other people. When I worked at Recon, it was, uh, it was the first time actually my exposure to a startup. And I actually felt like like job is fun, right? Um, the companies I saw before when I was in university, like as I said, like mid-sized large, large companies. And uh, you go there, it's an isolated place. You don't really talk to other, com to other people. And it seemed very boring. But when I joined Recon, it was like a different world for me, right? There was, it was fun. They had like uh, Xbox, they had Playstations. They, they didn't care about what time you go to work. You know, you could go nine, you could go 11, but you had to get a job done, right? So the, the, they give you a task and you're supposed to finish it by end of the week. And you could come every day from seven to 10 p.m. or you could come for four hours, you know, it doesn't matter. But it, what it matter was the quality of work. And I love that. And the other thing I love was responsibility. Right, so they, they say, hey, you're supposed to do this job. And it didn't give you the details of it in terms of what technology you're supposed to use, what language you gotta use, what stack you gotta use. You could pick, but obviously you had to explain why you're picking them, but you had the power of choosing your own tools. And I think the freedom that I received over there was amazing. And the other thing was really great about Recon was collaboration, right? So most of the ideas came when people talk in a room together. and. I love that aspect of it. And that was my first time that I was like, the startup can, be, can have a huge impact. So while I was working at Recon, uh, I, I used to ski a lot and I uh, used to sell my skis and buy new skis. And there was a site called Craigslist. It's like Gumtree in the UK and um, it's terrible user experience. And I was like, you know what? I could do better. I could make something better that I could can use it with my friends. And at the time, I used to ski a lot with a UBC student, University of British Columbia. And I was like, it's better if I have a site, only students from UBC could use it, right? It's safe. I mean, I, I know who I'm buying it from. It's not scams. And stop building it. It took me a few days and then built a site. And I told my friends in UBC. And this is while I was working at Recon. And I was so passionate coming home and start like working on it. And... After a couple of weeks, and I saw like thousands of people using the site, and I was like, "This is interesting." So I spent more time on it, and I told more friends about it. And again, at that point, I wasn't thinking, "Hey, this is the company. This is my startup." I didn't think about it. It was just a cool project. It was a cool project that tends kind of like useful for people. And um, I spent weekends on it. I spent like every waking hours that I now I wasn't at Recon. I was working on the product for at the time, and uh, that's basically how I started my first real uh, pet project. So I remember that the, the, the website went live in, uh, in October, November, right? And by January, we were like, this is growing. This is people use, people keep coming back. So it wasn't like, um, I using analytics, right? I remember at the time I was using Google analytics and I could see the retention. That means like same people keep coming back. I mean, I wouldn't know exactly who was coming back, but based on the data, you notice that, it, that user is coming back. So I knew people liking this site. People are listing items and selling it. Um, the interesting thing I realized was like people, a lot of people coming from iPhone, uh, Safari, I could see that. And it was a website. It was not an app. So I was like, what I could do is get somebody else to help me to build an iPhone app. Because I was a back-end person. I knew how to build a website, databases, design, but not at the app. 
So what I did was I found my co-founder and uh, Biocho. And the way I found it was interesting. So I went to GitHub and uh, looked online in UBC to figure out who, it, like, who can build apps and who's smart and student. I wanted to work with students because um, I just graduated, I just graduated and I want to work with uh, people like my age. And uh, I found Bio. So Bio built an app called UBC Me and for the, for the UBC and uh, it worked really well. So I emailed him and said, hey Bio, you know, do you want to work on this thing? And he was like, who are you? Anyway, we end up getting him grabbing coffee and I showed him the numbers. I was like, hey, uh, this is working. Uh, look at the numbers and join me. And we ended up working together. So he used to go to, he was a second year computer science, um, go to his courses during the day, and I was working at Recon. We used to meet in the evening um, in an open space environment and work on laptops, right? Till like 3 a.m., get back to work again. <clears throat> I used to go to the morning, I used to go back to work in the morning and be a good, go to school. We did that for two months and realized we were dying. Like we could not do this anymore. So Bio decided that he's gonna leave university and I would quit my job and we did that so bio went on leave and uh like you know i'm like like temporary to leave and i quit my job and we basically say hey i think we need to incorporate a company and at that point we officially got four technology inc and uh we started a company so we incorporated a company we incorporated a company and uh we didn't raise any capital for it because obviously we didn't know how to do it but we did we incorporate because we're supposed to incorporate and what we cared about there was a product so we keep going back to the product and building it and you know making what people want but at some point we realized we got to raise capital because we want to hire at that point um pretty much we were bootstrap right i i was paying through my credit card and um you know the, the cost was really low um i didn't know how to pitch i didn't know how to raise capital i didn't know anything about this stuff um I read a few books. I got a little better idea. I got a great advisor around me to help me to understand the situation. Um, the first check that we raised was from my colleague from my work. So I went to him and I said, hey, I built this thing. Um, it's working. I mean, I'm, I quit that time, right? So I wasn't at work. And I was like, hey, I quit um, because this is working. And I believe this is going to scale. People need this. Um, the current solution is not working well. Craig, this is not a great platform. And... He invested in me, but what he invested in was invested in me, um, not the idea, because at any stage, idea will change. Um, and especially early on, you, you have to pivot because um, you learn a lot throughout the years. But what investors look at it, that early on is that who you are, you know, are you passionate about this? Are you going to do anything you can to make this happen? And that's how we got our first check. One of the key things uh, I believe the company becomes successful is the people in it, right? Um, so we, we try to surround ourselves with outstanding people, people smarter than us, you know, who we want to hire uh, had to be smarter than us, uh, smarter than me. Like be on my co-founder is way smarter than me, you know, it's because it's, if there's not a smart around you, then uh, you can't bring new ideas to life. I mean, Steve Jobs, I mean, it's, it's everyone says now that A, a players hire A players. If you hire B player, then he's going to hire C and then he's going to go D and it's keep going down because, um, you know, A players doesn't want to work with B players. So you got to make sure you have great people in your team. And with a small amount of people, you can achieve outstanding results, right? So you don't need to grow to like 20, 30 people, you know, with four to five people, right people, you can achieve best results. At one point, um, actually, there was an, at the point that, that it threw at the year, through the first year, it kind of like changed our mindset is we got invited to YC, Y Combinator uh, Startup School. It's a day that uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg came and a few other speakers got invited and you had a chance to go and listen to these guys. And I vividly remember that day that me and Bio flew to San Francisco and there was lots of people there and Mark Zuckerberg and a few other speakers came and they give a talk. And I remember saying, I, I, these guys are like us. I mean, these guys are running a mil, like millions of people using their platforms and they're just like us. There's, there's no difference. And I remember I walked out and I was like, I could be like that, you know? I mean, there's, there's nothing that stops anyone to build something at that scale. And that give you the motivation, you know? It's like, I could go back and I can make my site or my platform or anything big as possible. 
Um, and Bian B- and I bought a ticket for the weekend and we canceled it. We did not go back to Vancouver. We stayed in San Francisco for the next two months, I think. Uh, we actually crashed in different places and then we, you know, we stayed in Airbnb. Um, and we, we, we thought San Francisco was a place to be at that time. We, we thought, okay, the, the mindset of growing and being aggressive in terms of like, you could do anything, you can achieve everything. It was great. Um, as I said, like Leon, you have to surround yourself with the smarter people. And we got surrounded by people who were achieving outstanding results. And we were learning a lot. And um, that environment helped us to, to, to grow from the seed level to way beyond that. Two and a half years in, um, we received a few offers from uh, like large, well-known companies. And uh, honestly, we were like, wow, this is, this is interesting. I mean, like people do care and what we're doing. And we start considering. It. We, st- we start considering the options. We're like, what do we do? So the thing with the startup, I mean, with our case is you don't have the answer, right? And people could help you, but they, they're not in your situation, right? So you could continue building this. And, you know, your dream is become this billion dollar company, huge, successful, or you know what, like maybe I want to do something else, you know, maybe I want to take another opportunity. I'm doing this for two and a half years and just maybe the parent company can take this to better position. So we took that option. We're like, hey, um, let this, give this baby, let it to somebody else grow it. You know, we, we grow into this certain point and somebody can take it from that. And after looking at a few offers, we took one that we thought was best for our shareholders and for ourselves as a team. Through the due diligence actually was tough for us. It was like, um, I don't remember it was three months that they were, um, you know, making sure everything is solid, and our code base, you know, um, databases, you know, everything, the numbers, retentions, like metrics, everything is supposed to be good, right? So we showed them everything. Um, it was a tough and but after three months, after doing lots of back and forth with the lawyers, making sure the, you know, the, the paperwork was done, and it was so much headaches. Um, and then we signed it. We, we signed it and uh, we were so happy. I mean, we couldn't believe that two and a half years ago, it was just an idea. And then it turned to a product. Then it took thousands of people using it every day. And then now a public traded company came and bought it. It was just, the whole journey was unbelievable. It was a roller coaster, but we went on party. We, we, we had a good time. I mean, it was good. What I like most about being an entrepreneur is you build something from scratch and you, you, you try to solve a problem that you, th- you see. And I mean, you, you're crazy enough that you think you can solve it and you do so, you build something and you provide it to the people and you're like hey this didn't exist before but now i think you benefit from it and you truly think that you can solve a problem i think being a being an entrepreneur people think it's sexy it's not actually it's miserable you know i i mean i had the toughest time in the first year i think you know i miss pretty much all my friends' birthdays. I didn't do any of them, right? Um, I didn't go out. I didn't, pretty much I didn't do anything for fun. I mean, my fun was just doing my work. I mean, it was actually fun for me, but as an as a outsider, you think he has a miserable life, you know? Um, my sacrifices was like, as I said, like I, I, I just worked and I swam, I, I swim. And that's pretty much was my life. So. Obviously, I cannot go back in time and attend my friend's birthdays or the weddings or anything. Um, But that's you do as an entrepreneur. You know, you you think um, this is way more important than doing other stuff at that time. Yeah, I made made lots of mistakes. I would say hiring. It's it's, uh, my biggest mistake. You know, if something is not working... um, I learned, I mean, it's tough to say, but you got to let people go. If it's not working, let people go. I mean, fire fast. Um, But, you know, if you see someone is great, excellent, just do what you can to keep them in a team, you know, because they will bring better people in the team, right? So 
I mean, I made lots of mistakes in hiring and uh, I mean, you can't go back, but what I learned is for my next venture or if I work with other company, I mean, try to choose the right team, uh, bring a great people together. I think what made us successful was um, being persistent on getting results. You know, um, we failed so many times, you know, we were getting, um, we were hoping to be like getting the best results and they keep failing on that. And we keep trying different experiments and keep failing. But we, what made us keep going is that like we could do it, you know, what about different angle? You know, we keep trying, you know, we keep going down and keep standing like we can try again. And that worked at the end. You know, I mean, you keep trying a thousand times and it doesn't work. The thousand one times it worked. And I'm like, yes, I knew it. So it's like, keep trying. I mean, persistence worked really well for us. If I could go back to university, say I could go back six years ago, right? Seven years ago. There was a couple of things I would do. First, I would surround myself with uh, people who, who have crazy ideas, who, have, who are thinking big, you know, thinking of people who want to change the world, you know. It sounds crazy. I mean, how would you one person who can change the world? But you do, you can actually change the world, you know. So I would surround myself with those people because new ideas that would come in a collaborate, in collaboration, right? So that was one thing I would do. The second thing I would invest on myself in terms of learning new tools, new um, programming languages, or uh, new, like, things that would help me build products. Um, uh, I would do those two. In 10 years, I want, to, I want to build or be a part of a company. I mean, uh, you don't have to, I mean, I believe like you don't have to, entrepreneurship doesn't mean you always start a company. You know, you, you can be in a company itself too, right? So in 10 years, I want to be part of something that has a huge impact in the world. You know, by impact means that they actually make people's lives easier. That could be anything, right? It could be a communication thing or it could be a transportation or, or anything. But I want to see that my work or the effect of our work, it's making people's life way easier than before. The, one of the things is very important in building a company is um, networking and communication. But, but networking, I don't mean just going to these... Uh, like, you know, this meetups and there's no value on it, right? They try to, to communicate and have a connection with people who, you know, who are influential, who actually make a difference, you know, and it could be designers, it could be engineers, but try to expand your network in terms of like, hey, I want just no more designers, no more engineers, more um, business people or anyone, right? And because in, achieve, in order to build something, you cannot do it alone. You know, you need a group of people with different uh, expertise come together to achieve. Uh, a great work comes when there's a, collabor it's a collaboration of a few people, right? And so I would say that try to meet as many as, pos many, as many people you can to expand your network. I think most company, I mean, most successful companies just look at them. It's not just the guy sit down in the corner and like, hey, I want to build this and it's going to become huge. No, it's like, hey, I've got this problem. I don't know what to do with it. And I think this thing is going to solve my problem. So you build it and you make your life easy. And like, this is great. And you show your friends and they're like, hey, this is helping me too. And then they show their friends. So I think the best thing you could do is like, what problems do you have? You know, and how can you solve those? If you can solve for yourself and you make it way easier for yourself, it's a high chance that a lot of people will use it too.